Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Big Ideas on the Go with your host, Dimitri Sirota. Uh, I have as my guest uh, on this occasion, Pedro Pavon, uh, formerly of Miami, now of Atlanta. Um, Pedro, maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, yourself, uh, your background. I know that you worked previously at Oracle and Salesforce and now at Meta. Uh, tell us a little bit about you. Hey, man. First of all, thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be here. And uh, Big Ideas is a company I really uh, admire quite a bit. Um, well, look, my background is pretty straightforward in a non-straightforward kind of way. I, I uh, went to law school and didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do, but you know, I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, and while there, really got interested in privacy issues, sort of like in a constitutional law type of sense, and uh, interned with a, a professor who was doing research in this area. And this is back in 2006, where people were talking about privacy, but it wasn't what it is now. Um, Graduated at the peak of the Great Recession, didn't really have a job, so went and took a federal clerkship and uh, did some really cool like national security level type work um, at the Justice Department and did some time at the Department of Energy and then joined a law firm. I had a great time at the firm, but like the salesmanship part of being an uh, outside counsel just wasn't for me. So I went in-house at Oracle and um, really dug deep there into privacy and uh, data licensing and ad tech specifically, Oracle sort of just unleashed me into this uh, business that they were building and growing. And I spent five years there helping them grow their uh, digital advertising business from zero to a multi-billion dollar uh, enterprise. Then joined Salesforce, one of the best companies and organizations I've ever been a part of, culturally great people, you know, great identity, great mission. Um, really, really enjoyed my time at Salesforce. I was on the data privacy legal team there. Uh, we did a lot of great work, uh, uh, sort of like pushing the envelope on, on, on running a business while being really conservative about people's privacy and learned a lot there. And then got this opportunity to come to Meta and take on a broader than just legal role and, and incorporate kind of policy into my portfolio. I joined Meta almost, it's going to be almost two years now. Um, so two years ago-ish and uh, sort of joined a team that was already really strong, but small and have scaled it uh, quite a bit. Our team's tripled in size since I've been here and we do everything you can imagine. But uh, like if I had to narrow down our, our, our work to a couple sentences, I'd say we do a lot of internal advocacy and transference of signal from external stakeholders into our product and engineering team. So having our engineering teams understand how their products are going to land and be received is part of my team's work. And then external facing engagement, where we talk directly to stakeholders and sort of give them insight into our plans and our product ideas and the work streams we're, uh, we're, uh, we're partaking in now to make sure that we're doing, you know, work that is informed by, uh, you know, the, the insights and opinions of the folks that are going to critique or otherwise um, analyze uh, the changes in products that we build. So, and and yeah. are there, is, do you have a particular focus still on advertising? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so is that kind of the main thrust of what you're doing at, uh, at Meta? Yeah. So my team supports the advertising side of the house uh, directly. Uh, we're a little bit broader. Um, I call my team the ads and monetization po privacy policy team. And so the way I kind of try to frame it is if like, if it makes a buck and you can't touch it, my team supports it from a policy <laughs> standpoint. So, you know, at a company like Meta, a, a tremendous proportion of that is going to be advertising, but there, there's more stuff, you know, think e-commerce um, as, as a big example of something other than, uh, uh, than advertising. We also have a, a growing B2B business, our messaging business. There's a lot of other stuff that my team supports too. Yeah. And I'm curious, you know, so obviously, you know, privacy advertising is, is a huge deal. It was a big kind of driver for some of the things around GDPR. And I'm kind of curious to get your take on that. Uh, and then maybe also talk a little bit about kind of the future um, of monetization. I know Meta is obviously getting into kind of the virtual worlds and virtual goods and all these other type of things. So we'd love to kind of get your take on the evolution of uh, privacy implications in the advertising world, uh, whether it's Google or Facebook or anybody else or Meta. Uh, and then also, how does that evolve? 
Yeah, this is a good question. I mean, you know, like when we think about digital advertising over the last 25, whatever years, 30 years now, um, you know, it's usually a little ad showing up somewhere on a screen, right? And it's mostly two dimensional and has information for you to receive and inter not necessarily interact with, but just absorb. Uh, as we move into the metaverse and into augmented and virtual reality spaces, that's going to change, right? Um, and we're not and when I say we, I sort of just mean me. I'm not exactly sure how, but I know it will. And so laying the groundwork for uh, uh, approaching the new world of advertising in this augmented and virtual reality space that Meta and other companies are building is going to be really important. And one of the ways that we can do that is by taking the learnings from the wins and losses, mistakes and good outcomes of the past and applying that knowledge to the future so that we don't repeat some of the mistakes that we've made. And when I say we, I mean everybody, right? Like there's a lot of things that you get wrong when you do something for the first time. If you don't learn from that, when you do something for the second time, uh, you're, you know, shame on you type of thing. So like, I think applying the learnings of the past, but not handcuffing yourself to old ways of thinking is a difficult exercise we're all going to have to go through as digital advertising evolves into this new space that we're headed for at and, like and rapid you, know, you mentioned you did mention earlier on that you know kind of your role as you kind of evolved in your career has become more policy centric right mm -hmm. um where again you're trying to kind of create policies whether internal or in collaboration maybe with uh governmental um uh institutions uh, how do you see that carrying forward? Or do you even really know how that's going to carry forward when you start talking about digital goods and other types of monetization? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky dynamic. Uh, first of all, I work at a company that has under a lot of scrutiny, rightfully so, right? Um, you know, my, my company impacts billions of people every day. And, you know, the implications of the metaverse are, are major for society and for the world. And so like the dynamic with external stakeholders is, is sensitive and delicate. And one of the ways that I try to manage it is by being honest and telling the truth and being transparent and sharing and creating a culture of trust. That's going to take time for for, for for me and for, for my organization and for the industry as a whole, because there's a lot of distrust. And I think, you know, some of it is rightfully placed. Some of it is a little bit hysteria, but, um, you know, rebuilding channels of communication and reinforcing the ability for uh, regulators and industry to cooperate in the rulemaking process is going to be really important, not just for the out, for the business goals of the businesses that are getting impacted by the rules, but to have the best outcomes for people, which should be the goal for everybody, right? Um, and so I think like the more collaborative we can be going forward, the better building those bridges and connecting the right people with each other so that that happens is going to be uh, an effort that will be ongoing and difficult and i think it just requires good faith from all sides and you know part of my role here is is to to build those connections and that trust and reinforce them so okay uh, fantastic uh, response you know one thing that you're kind of also highly involved with and something that um you know has been in the news probably for the better part of four or five years um is the algorithms that algorithms that drive whether it's ad placement um, at Google, at Meta, wherever, whether it's, you know, which, you know, what, uh, what commentary you see and, you know, the fact that, you know, we kind of all live in, in a bubble, um, you know, that a lot of that kind of AI and ML that drives a lot of the monetization, a lot of the advertising, a lot of the ad playments, what's your take on, on that? How is that going to unfold? Obviously, there's been a lot of conversations around it at a, at a you know, at, at a government level with a lot of political figures. Uh, you have a very wealthy person now kind of buying the company to, you know, promising to make it completely transparent and open source. What's, what's your take on, on kind of the right mix? Look, I, I think we're headed for a really complicated future. You know, historically, the privacy debate or the privacy discussion has been, why do you need all this data? And when you have it, how are you being a steward of it in a way that protects people's privacy? So like, you know, just think that like, fair information privacy principles and like data minimization principles and like, you know, only collecting and using the data you need for the app for the purpose that you need it for making that clear to users and then getting rid of it when when you're done. And from a privacy perspective, that all seems pretty rational and good when you layer in this like automation that's happening in the advertising industry, right? Where we're moving away from sort of like manual targeting towards like an automated algorithmic based um, ad personalization ecosystem. Those issues still remain and they're important, 
Um, but we're layering in an entire new type of uh, challenge, which is like the opacity of the algorithm, like how it works and being able to explain what the output goals are and what the impacts are on all the people affected by the algorithm and making sure that we create controls and safety levers to protect the most vulnerable people impacted by these algorithms. And you'd say, well, like ads is kind of low stakes. It's just ads, but that's not true. There are categories of ads that can have tremendous economic implications on people, you know, uh, well, well-being and, and safety implications on people. And so making sure that uh, we're responsibly implementing these algorithmic and automated tools that are going to take over the advertising personalization uh, process is going to be really important. I don't know that anyone has an exact solution for it uh, at this time. So we're sort of in this experimentation period. And when I say we, I mean everyone, uh, including regulators. Like, I don't think regulators have quite figured out exactly how to regulate this. Um, the things that worry me are that we're over prescriptive on regulation and we stifle innovation and actually limit the benefits of all of these technologies that potentially could lift people out of obscurity or out of poverty or out of, of marginalization. Um, or that uh, we simply just have entire organizations opt out of like a tremendous tool for personalization. And if there's something I've learned over my career, it's that people like to be curated too. Like people like personalization, right? Like I, I think that is generally true. How we do that and how much control people have over how it works is really important. And so getting that right and optimizing and calibrating it over time will be a responsibility of all the companies involved in these types of technologies. And I think going back to my previous response about like the regulatory landscape and how to engage, creating rules that are constructive and include input from the organizations and stakeholders that are most affected by those rules is going to be important. So we don't like sort of overcorrect or undercorrect and try to get it just right. Yeah, I know. Look, I agree with your comment around kind of personalization. At the end of the day, I think the success of platforms uh, like Meta and others is because they did provide you kind of, if you're interested in a particular group, communication around that group, if you're interested in particular products, you know, visibility into other alternative products in the same kind of vein. So I do think that we lose sight of that, that we do like those kind of personalization experiences. Um, obviously, you're at the forefront of kind of, you know, the, the main thrust that kind of became GDPR and CCPA and, you know, the over collection of data, the, um, the lack of uh, clarity, or as you described, kind of the opacity around, you know, the algorithms that were being used. And, and so I know that's been kind of a, a major topic for, for dialogue. What do the next two, three years hold, right? Are, is it going to be the same thing? Um, are we going to start talking about like NFTs and digital digital goods uh, in the metasphere? What, what do you think happens over the next couple of years? I, I think it's a couple of things. And uh, first of all, I, th like the rate at which new technologies are developing, I think is accelerating. We're, we're sort of lulled for a few years um, in the most recent past, it's sort of accelerating again. And you see companies like mine and others investing tens of billions of dollars in building new surfaces for which for there to be like, uh, you know, for society to part to take place in and for eco e economies to develop. And I think that's going to be great. We see it in NFTs. We see it on blockchain. We're seeing it in the metaverse dialogue. We're seeing it in augmented reality and in other areas to web three, all this stuff that's happening all at once. Yeah. It's not clear to me uh, what's durable, what's going to be meaningful, and what's going to, uh, you know, kind of be the next transformative technology. I think metaverse and augmented reality specifically have the biggest chance of, in the next two years, meaningfully changing the way millions, if not billions of people engage in their daily lives. And I'm excited to see that um, from a you know, governance standpoint and an industry standpoint, what I think is most important to make whatever steps we take towards the future better is that we have inclusive dialogue and inclusive stakeholder and expert engagement in how we think about what we're building and how we're building it. Because historically that hasn't been true, right? Like, you know, I say this a lot on my podcast, but if if 10 white guys sit in a room and design the metaverse, the, you know, the theory of the metaverse in, in California, like that's not really inclusive vision of what the metaverse could be, right? I think the same applies to Web3, whatever. So making sure we have voices from parts of the world that historically haven't had a seat at the table uh, 
contribute to the conversation about what we're building and how we're building it going forward is going to be really important. I'm really intentional about this. And I think anybody I talk to, I try to reinforce that message with, which is if we really think we want to build, you know, if we're really going to build this next new part of civilization over the next three, four, five, 10 years, doing it inclusively will help us not repeat many of the mistakes that we've made when society and civilization have made strides in the past. Yeah, no, I fully agree. Um, last question for you. Um, you know, you you grew up uh, kind of following kind of the pretty traditional paths in terms of um, uh, privacy professionals coming yeah. to the legal uh, legal route. So evolving, kind of looking at kind of um, legal questions, and then obviously working on on policies. What is the role for privacy engineering, right? That kind of uh, merger between the people that are actually building code and trying to do it in a privacy preserving way. And, and folks like yourself. So what do you, where do you see that kind of um, uh, interplay? Look, I think privacy by design is an engineering effort and, um, and it's gonna require uh, a lot of understanding and expertise by the zero, you know, the zeros and ones folks uh, to build technologies that incorporate privacy principles uh, inherently by the nature of the product. Um, where I think there is a lot of room for improvement is translating the obligations that exist out there into actionable engineering work streams. And I think one of the ways to do that is to create better bridges between like the regulatory policy and legal facing professionals and engineering teams. I'm seeing that happen at Meta. I definitely was watching, seeing that happen at Salesforce. Um, if I go further back to my time at Oracle, it, you know, like the building blocks of that was starting to develop, uh, but just bringing these communities of experts yeah. more together and ensuring that engineers, you know, are, are trained and learn about privacy practices and the significance of building that into the products and, 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 and services that they're going to build when they graduate is going to be critical. I live in Atlanta, Georgia Tech, like Georgia Tech has a tremendous effort to like teach privacy to their engineering students. And I think that that is the right thing to do and other schools should follow. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think that's uh, definitely the path and something we hear from companies as well quite, quite a bit. Um, Pedro, with that, I think uh, we'll kind of wrap up. So thank you again for joining us. I think this has been a fascinating conversation. And obviously, it's been great talking to somebody that's kind of seen that evolution uh, from privacy as more kind of a pure play legal profession to something that is infusing the way we build, you know, code. Uh, and the way we kind of operate both in, in this verse and, and the future metaverse. So um, uh, thank you again for uh, joining us on our podcast. Uh, and to our audience, I'd like to thank you for, uh, for coming along for the ride um, and encourage you again to uh, leave comments uh, wherever you, you download uh, your podcast. And, um, and again, thank you everyone and uh, subscribe please. So we'll talk to you next time.